Lurches has his own gym. Carl Lurches, he's played uh, collegiate football in the SEC. One of, actually, it's the premier conference uh, in college sports, but he's also a Vanderbilt grad. So he's really done both. He's academically competed with the best in the classroom, and ac- athletically, he's competed with the best on the field. So he's one of our jocks. So we're here live with Harold Lurches. We want to first thank you, Harold, so much for being on our show today. Yeah, thank you for having me. And like we were saying, um, with the transition. So uh, give us a little bit, a little background about yourself. Where are you from? Who are you? What you been through? Yeah, yeah. Um, my name is Harold Lurches, born in Newark, New Jersey, by way of Florida. I played high school ball in Florida, so that's how I ended up in Vanderbilt. Because everyone always asks me, how did I get to Vanderbilt from New Jersey? Because I played high school football in Florida. So that's how I ended up in, at Vanderbilt. Anyways, fast forward now. Um, I'm a married man. You know, three kids, two girls and a boy. So, you know, they're all in the tent. So the house is very busy. <laughs> so, you know, I, I appreciate Jockey Patient coming out here, you know, giving me some time to be on their platform because, you know, I'm busy life right now so <laughs> but i'm definitely enjoying that um i played i played college football at the vanderbilt university you know what they call it the harvard the south but you know in the sec you know very competitive what we play at so i definitely enjoyed that time so you know moving forward now i am a personal trainer so that is my occupation so i mean i enjoy what i do and it's more about getting people healthy more internally, mentally, physically, and spiritually. But, you know, I always tell people, you know, the, the physical part is the is the byproduct of getting your internal part correct. So I, that's more of eating healthy, making sure you're doing the right things, putting the right stuff in your body. Then you definitely see the results from the physical part as you do, as you, t- as you take care of the internal part of your body. So what I'm hearing from you is if you really want to take an assessment of what's going on inside of you, Go stand in the mirror. (laughs) Definitely, definitely, definitely. So let me ask you this. So as people are transitioning, I know when we were playing sports, we would burn, you know, five, 10,000 calories a day. We could eat anything that we want to. And those become habits. But, you know, once our working out and physical uh, fitness and physical regimen start to wane, a lot of times we keep consuming foods at the same capacity and a lot of times and i know for myself uh, you just start to gain weight right right you're not keeping your ratio up so when people are transitioning right when they're going from a very active lifestyle to more sedentary to more of what they call like the real world or corporate life <laughs> what are some tips what are some things people can do to make sure that they're consuming the right amount of calories now when it comes to calories as, as you said earlier before you know i always tell you know when you're trying to transition from the athlete athletic life to business life the difference is with when you was athlete you was working out two to three four hours a day that's the reason you was allowed to eat as much as you want and eat anything you want because you know you're going to burn it off regardless but now you're in the lifestyle where you have to manage your time and you're really allowed to give yourself one hour of working out so now you have to definitely minimize your calories, but not only really minimize your calories, it's really more about minimizing what you eat versus how many calories you put. Because you can still eat as much as you did in college when you were an athlete, but it's about the different types of food that you eat. So now it's more about increasing your vegetables, your fruits, increasing your proteins, and being less on your carbohydrates. Because you know you need the carbohydrates for the energy, but now you're not going to need it as much only because you're not working out as long as the period because you give yourself about an hour to really train, and that's all you need to keep to stay in shape, but make sure you go hard within that hour. But after that, then you have to make sure to keep your, keep burning fat, because that's essentially, I, I feel like that's the biggest thing everybody needs is keep burning fat. You need to increase your protein, increase your vegetables, increase your, your, um, your fruits, like I said earlier. But the best way to do that, if you feel like you can't do it, is to write it down to keep track. Right, have, have a food log. Just like you have a log of your business meetings that you always have throughout the day, have a food log to be like, I'm going to eat at this time, eat at this certain time, and eat at that time. And that's the best way for you to keep track of it. 
I know in college we didn't do that because we didn't have to. They, <laughs> right. they, would tell us, they would tell us when to eat, what yeah. to eat, and so yeah. like everything was taken care of. But now it's changed. It's split. Now you have to do it for yourself. Right. So in order, in order to become the best version of yourself, you have to write it down to take care of yourself. For the person that's on the go with an unpredictable <laughs> schedule, what are some snacks? So when I go to the grocery store and I'm buying groceries for the week, what are some snacks I can throw into my grocery cart and say, hey, when things get a little bit iffy or wonky and I know I'm hungry, don't grab the M&Ms. I should grab... You should grab... I would tell a great, great snack is, is, is the mixed the mixed um, dried fruits and, uh, and nuts. Because, I mean, mixed nuts, are, I feel like they, give, they had the protein in it. And they also give you good energy. So it's like even with, with the quick sugar, you know, some people, they need that sugar if you have the dried fruit. So when you have one of those packets, I feel like it's the best thing you can get. Or a fruit that you can put in a Ziploc bag or a vegetable. Something like that to where you know that you're grabbing something healthy and you can eat it regardless. Instead of going for the fries or going for the quick McDonald's yeah. burgers. It's like, you know, you have something with you that you packed in your in your um your suitcase, not suitcase, your briefcase, or in your purse, regardless that you just grab it, get it, or or even such those um the protein bars, you know, any kind of protein bar, snack bar, something that you something that you know that you, one thing I like I like to always tell my clients, I need you to pick something that you like. Cause nine and ten times if I give you something to pick, you're not gonna like it and then you're not gonna do it. So it's more I'm trying to make sure it goes towards you. If it's your lifestyle, so if you like, for example, some type of protein bar, any brand that doesn't have that much sugar in it, you find one that you like, so they, that you can pack that in your bag, you get it, that's my snack, I eat on that, and then the rest of my day can go. I know when I was playing, I was like, I'm good. <laughs> I would do something else, I'm going to read a book. <laughs> but eventually, my body started breaking down. My shoulder hurts, my knee hurts, my back hurts. And you start realizing, and then even mentally, I can feel myself being irritated, short-tempered, um, just, just just sporadic, not being yeah. able to <laughs> So I've learned from my own health, physically and mentally, fitness is just part of what I've got to do, just to yeah. keep who I am. But for those that are, that we no longer have the personal trainer, Right, we no longer have the workout. We never, we don't have a training table. We don't. You got a work schedule. Right, right. As you're planning that week, you're planning that day. What's a reasonable schedule for somebody who's just they've had enough of where they're at, and they just want to say, I want to get the ball rolling. I want to get, just get some type of routine moving. So, what should I actually do? to just stop being where I'm at. I'll definitely say the first thing I would definitely say is go out there and do a quick jog or, or walk. Want to start a, a workout regimen? I would recommend three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and use Tuesday and Thursday as a rest day because you don't know how your body's going to react because you haven't done it in a while. And I don't want to just push you into a certain class to where you feel like, oh, I can do this, but then the next day you're very sore. And sometimes when people get very sore after their first workout, they usually quit. And I don't want nobody to be quick. Because honestly, when, after that Monday workout, you really don't know how your body's going to feel the next day. So that's why I, I always recommend starting off three days a week with Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Monday, you can do whatever you want. Make it be cardio and weights or just straight cardio or just straight weights. That's fine. But knowing in your mind the next day you have the rest, that allows you to go hard 100% in the gym so that next day, oh, I can rest. That's fine. Then Wednesday, you come back and do the same thing or a different workout, whatever your choice is. And then, you know, you're going to have to rest on Thursday and Friday, you come back and do it again. See, and the reason, the reason I tell a lot of clients to do that when you first start off because I will never tell somebody, oh, we're going five days straight. Because at the end of the week, I guarantee if you're just now getting back into working out, even though you're used to be an athlete, it's still going to hurt regardless. So what's going to happen at the end of the week? You're going to be like, oh, man, this week is too damn hard, and I'm not going to do it again next week. So it's like you're putting yourself behind the eight ball before you even get past it. 
So that's why I usually say at least three times a week where you have time to rest and then you have the weekend to rest and you come back on Monday and you do it all over again. But that allows you to get in better shape so where you can increase the days or let me go four days this time or let me go five days the whole week. So you got to start off small. I know a lot of people, one thing one thing about training athletes, I can definitely tell you, when they first get in the gym, oh, I'm an athlete, I'm used to all this, I mean, I'm, I'm good. But you haven't been in the gym for two years. What makes you think it's gonna that you're gonna just jump back into it and be okay? Right. And then that, and after that first workout, you you feel like you about to die. I'm like, cause you ain't been in the gym. So don't tell me, yeah, you've been an athlete, you're an athlete, you're good. But no, what, one thing I understand, us as athletes, yeah, we've been athletes, but we was training every day. We have to we have to remember that we've been training every day of our life. That's what made us in the best shape possible. But when we take that time off, you're not gonna be in the best shape possible. So um, we have to just keep that in mind when you're going back into the gym and don't feel like because you're an athlete that, oh, this is easy. You know, check your ego at the door and be like, this is why I am now. I haven't been in the gym for about two years. Let me let me start off slow and move up. And that's the biggest thing. I'm trying to push you. But even 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 as, even, the funny thing, even as an athlete, you come in and be like, I mean, I'm not in shape, but I know I could do this. But that next day you soar and be like, oh, <laughs> Dude, I'm not trying to do this no more, man. <laughs> right. I don't, I don't need to be. Right. And also, just realizing, too, it took us a while to get to where we were. And I think part of that's what we forget. We think we just woke up and it's done and feel playing in Florida. It's like, it doesn't work like that. We don't right. think of those individual steps, but that's the roads we took. And that's part of what we're doing at Jockey Patient is to remind athletes that it took you thousands of hours to get on that field. Exactly. It's the same game. If you're out of shape now, take the same mindset you did to get into shape and play football. Take the same mindset to get into shape is just to stay alive. Stay alive, yeah. The rules are the same. The, the fields might change, mm -hmm. but the rules are the same to this. And that's something we unconsciously are masters at. We just need to be consciously aware of it.